In Universal Century 0079, Xeon began experimenting with the concept of a mobile suit that could achieve independent flight. After many changes and upgrades, this would eventually result in the MS-07H8 Goof Fly Type. Despite technically achieving their goal of being able to fly, a myriad of flaws and complications, like an overheating engine, prevented the Goof Fly type from truly being successful in its intended role. After Xeon's surrender then, the designs for the first prototypes fell into the Federation's hands and they decided to continue the concept. Even though they somewhat modernized the Goof Fly type by installing a linear seat and also replacing the thermonuclear rocket engines with thermonuclear jet engines, the machine that would become the Federation's testbed for their own flying machine was the Gundam TR-1 Hazel Custom. As with all experiments carried out with the Hazel, this was achieved by adding extra parts and a new backpack. This new equipment was dubbed the Icaros unit after the famous Greek mythological figure Icaros who is sometimes also referred to as Icarus, the later Latin version of his name. Originally, the unit was designed in such a way that it would use both thrust and wings to stay airborne, but it soon became obvious that the shape of a mobile suit simply didn't lend itself to aerodynamic flying. And even worse, it also caused an unacceptable loss of maneuverability. Because of this, the prototype Icarus was redesigned to focus purely on achieving flight through brute force with the use of large thrusters. In this form, the Hazel also retained its original backpack and was usually equipped with a single shield booster for extra thrust. In order to power all of these thermonuclear jet and rocket engines, extra generators were installed in the shoulders and on the waist. For the first time, a mobile suit with self-sustained flight capabilities was deemed a true success and further development was greenlit in the form of the Byerland. And throughout this unit's development, a trial version of its arms was also tested out on the Hazel Icarus. Rather than the usual manipulator hands, the Byerland had a claw on each arm with a built-in mega particle gun. And while these claws were not able to wield any guns, they were capable of wielding beam sabers. Its test data has been long since lost, but seeing as how these were used on the Byerland, the initial reception must have been positive. However, in later years, these arms have become a source of criticism. Other than those mega particle guns, the Byerland has no built-in weapons, and since the Byerland also couldn't wield any other weapons, some have claimed that the Byerland was either undergunned or otherwise limited in its weaponry. To a certain degree, this does hold some merit, but at the same time, it disregards the reality of combat during the Grips War. On the one hand, many of the enemy units that it would be facing off against were machines that incorporated the movable frame technology and were thus more lightly armored as a result. And on the other hand, compared to contemporary units, the Byerland's mega particle guns were already plenty powerful enough at 4.7 megawatts each. This easily outclassed any other mass production unit and even many other prototype units, many of which typically sortied with a loadout similar to that of the Byerland anyways making it anything but a limited unit for the time and the war that it was created for. Another big benefit of this was of course keeping the weight down, resulting in a surprisingly capable flying machine with a lot of mobility to boot. And even though it was designed for use on the Earth's atmosphere, the Byerland was also capable of operating in space, where it was again able to show off its very high performance. <laughs> It is unknown how many Byrons were produced throughout the war, but they did see limited mass production, with at least three known units having survived the war. The first two were part of the Federation's initiative of incorporating Titan's mobile suits into their arsenal and were dubbed the Byerland Custom. 
first and foremost, this involved making them more Federation-esque by replacing the mono eye with the Federation standard visor, and secondly, it involved upgrading them with spare parts from various other high-performance Titans units, leading to the engineers dubbing the project the Chimera Project. As a result of this, Unit 1 and 2 had similar features, like their upgraded thrusters, but they also had unique parts. In terms of recycled Titans parts, Unit 1 featured the Gathlace claws and feed derived from the bound dock. In addition to this, it now had a mega particle cannon on each arm with a variable output, ranging from a standard beam rifle to a beam machine gun to even a beam saber. And just like the normal Byrland, this Byrland custom was sometimes down talked as undergunned because it supposedly only had those two mega particle cannons and also didn't have the ability to equip any other weapons. Again, this assessment would prove to be quite false in real combat. A final change to this Byland custom then was the addition of fuel tank hardpoints on the thrusters to extend its operational time. Unit 2 then took less parts from other Titans machines and had only two beam cannons that were inspired by those of the Gaplin's movable shield binders. It also had the ability to equip the same optional booster as the Gaplin. Other weapons then were two long beam rifles that could also emit a beam saber, and it was also the only known Byland variation with Federation hands, so it could also use any standard Federation weapon. The third Byland to survive the war then was the Byland Isolde. Other than its color scheme though, it was mostly the same as the standard Byland. Its head was changed to be more Gundam-esque, its shoulder thrusters were now upgraded to ones similar to the Byland customs, and extra thrusters on its backpack modeled after those of the Byland Custom Unit 1 were added. With these upgrades, the Azolt's performance was probably comparable to that of Unit 1. Finally then, there is one more development of the Byland that is rumored to have existed. The RX 160X Apparatus. This machine was essentially the normal Byland with two mega particle cannons on his chest, two wire-guided mega launchers that could also be operated wirelessly, and a quasi psychomus system to operate those launchers. Supposedly, this machine was made by defected Titans engineers for the AUG, although it seems likely that this thing never went further than the drawing board. And that is all for this development history on one of my favorite mobile suits from the Zeta Gundam anime series. In the past, I always felt that it was a bit overlooked, but ever since Unicorn came out, the Byerland has definitely become more well known. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more similar content. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope all of you watching have a great day and I'll see you all next time.